What's up and welcome to the HVAC Dope Show. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the best things you can do for your heat pump. And spoiler alert, in one word, uh, the best thing you can absolutely do for your heat pump comes down to airflow. Now, there's a few things I'm gonna talk about and a few nuances that I wanna go into as it comes to airflow, how to properly size your system, or some of the issues that come from having an improperly sized system. Now, there's two ways that your system can be improperly sized, which we're going to touch on in a second. But before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please, for the algorithm, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. We put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home. So if you do find this content helpful, liking the video, subscribing to the channel, it's a free way you can show your support and it's much appreciated. Now when it comes to heat pumps and airflow or really air conditioners and airflow or really just HVAC and airflow, it all comes at the end of the day, you can never really have too much airflow for your system. Now without get, going into ridiculous examples where your duct works like extremely oversized and you can't feel any velocity coming through through it because you have 20 tons of duct work on a two ton system that never happens by the way you rarely run it you're never going to really run into that into the field because bigger duct work costs more money and so when builders are building homes unfortunately a lot of times they put in the smallest duct work that they can squeak by and get approved through permitting because they don't care if it's going to run a little bit better with ducts that are one inch bigger in size because that's going to cost them more money and they're just a builder and so at the end of the day they don't put in the best equipment they don't size systems properly and so we're going to talk about some of the ways that you can overcome the airflow issues that you might be experiencing and you might not even know you're experiencing air airflow issues until I start describing some of the symptoms. So for example, if in the middle of the summer on the hottest days, your system's running constantly and you find that it starts to ice up, right? If you have a dirty filter, this will obviously cause it to ice up. But if you have a brand new filter and it's a low MERV rating filter, maybe you're running it with no filter and your system's icing up. Oftentimes this is an indicator that you have undersized ductwork or an oversized system. And I'm going to talk about how you actually go about correcting this because the, the right way to correct an oversized system is really just to replace the system with the right size system. And if it's only oversized for the ductwork, but it's marginally oversized for the house. So let's say your home needs a three ton AC system, but you have a four ton system. Now that's a pretty big difference in terms of a one ton jump. So in that instance, you would probably want to replace the system because it's going to be hard to squeeze enough ductwork. And, and this is going to vary by region too, right? In a market like Phoenix, the loads are so high in the summer that system system might not short cycle just because when it's 115, 120 degrees outside, your system runs constantly. If you have a three ton system and you put in a four ton system, your ductwork's not going to be big enough for it. It's going to ice up and you need to add 400, 450 CFM just to get that thing operating properly. Technically, you can get by on 300 CFM, which stands for cubic feet per minute of airflow. So at 350 CFM per ton, that would mean that a three ton system requires 1050 CFM or cubic feet per minute of airflow at a minimum, but ideally the system should have 400 CFM per ton, which is about 1200 CFM on a three ton system. Now there's a couple benefits of correcting airflow issues and addressing the ductwork problem. And it's a lot easier than you think. And I'm going to give you an example of how you can address that with maybe just one or two additional duct runs. Now, first off, the biggest benefit of increasing your airflow on your system is going to be increased life expectancy of the system because there's going to be less wear and tear on both the blower motor, which is your indoor blower motor that circulates air throughout the ductwork in your home. What happens when you have poor airflow, it throws off the temperatures and pressures of the refrigerant in the system. And therefore the uh, refrigeration circuit, your compressor is actually working harder than it needs to. Oftentimes you'll have a higher head temperature or head pressure, which is your liquid line pressure. And your pressures and temperatures are just going to be off and make your compressor work harder than it needs to, which results in increased wear and tear and ultimately reduced life expectancy. Now the actual statistic of the amount of homes that have undersized ductwork is somewhere in the realm of 80%. So if you find yourself in this predicament, you're not alone. And like I said, this is because of the reason that builders are just trying to cut corners and put in the absolute bare minimum to squeak by through the permitting process. They're not trying to make sure that it's going to work for the long term. They're trying to make sure that it's going to work when you buy the house and you show you get there and you show up and you use it the first year because their warranty is not going to last beyond the first year. So they're really just trying to put in the, the minimal amount of ductwork there that they can. Now, let's say your system was the system that I described earlier earlier, but instead of a three ton system and you had a four ton system installed, but the home needed a three ton system. Let's say you had a three ton system, what the needs for the home, that's what the cooling demand for the home, that's what the load was based on the load calculation. But let's say that the ductwork could only handle three tons as well, but the system that got installed was actually a three and a half ton. So it's slightly oversized for the ductwork. Now that little half ton of difference really only requires 200 CFM increase in airflow, assuming that it originally had three tons worth of 
airflow. So the way that we would calculate that and the way that we would make sure that the system is going to run properly or have enough airflow properly, we can actually accomplish that with one eight inch duct run because an eight inch duct run is gonna allow for somewhere between 150 and 230 cubic feet per minute of increased airflow for just a single eight inch run. So if you have, let's say an unfinished basement or let's say your system's in an attic and you can just pop in an extra supply run somewhere, that's gonna make a huge difference. It's normally not a huge expense. It's definitely cheaper than replacing the system. And if the system, like I said, was marginal on sizing and it's something where, you know, it starts to short cycle, it might be better for energy efficiency to just replace the system in the first place. But if you can get away with adding an extra duct run, it's definitely going to be a cheaper fix than replacing the whole system. In addition, though, you cannot just add one run on your supply, which a supply is what's supplying ductwork or supplying airflow to the home. A return is what's returning or bringing air from the home back to the air handler or the furnace. And for every supply that you would add, you would need to add a return. Now, you don't need to add an additional return for each supply, but let's say you have 1200 CFM of airflow on your supply, you wanna make sure you have, or 1200 CFM of airflow on your return as well. So in that instance, you could add another eight inch return somewhere. Um, the best place to do it would be one of the hotter rooms in the home. For example, if it's a air conditioner season and you have a room upstairs that's always hot if you can pull an extra return from that room and probably doesn't have a return as is adding that extra return airflow is going to make a big difference in the long run and make it so that you have a, a system that functions better is more efficient reduces wear and tear on the system at the end of the day a lot more comfortable hey who doesn't love being more comfortable we're in the comfort business and that's what we're always trying to do is make sure that our customers are comfortable at the end of the day and this is why we can't drill airflow enough now the reason this is the best thing that you can do for your heat pump is because a heat pump, remember, is just an air conditioner with a reversing valve. So when the system is running in heating mode or in cooling mode, it's still using the same amount of CFM in order for the refrigeration cycle to work properly and have enough airflow for the tonnage of the equipment. And so if you just make sure that you have adequate airflow for your home, have the right amount of duct work, plenty of airflow, your HVAC system is going to be a lot happier. And if you're on the fence and you're not sure, you know, your system is sized properly for the duct work or sized properly for the the home most contractors or at least the reliable ones will be able to come out and identify this they know how to look at a duct chart they know how to look at an airflow chart and count your registers and and say okay cool you have 12 six inch duct runs and we can get approximately let's say 80 or 90 cfm from these depending on what the static pressure is of the system and they're going to be able to determine that so if you are on the fence and you're not sure if that's what the issue is call a local contractor to come out and address the situation and we hope you found this content helpful if you haven't subscribed to the channel already please consider that are doing so. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service, like Denver, Colorado, or Phoenix, Arizona, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. We come out for free for all first-time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service, so you can stay up-to-date when we start servicing your metro. And we put out a lot of content on how to get the best HVAC for your home and how to get the best heat pumps for your home. So if you're in the market for a new heat pump, watch some of these next videos where we talk about what goes into picking out the best heat pump for your home. And again, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thanks for tuning in and we will catch you on the next episode.